It's crime time here on Closing Arguments. Let's introduce tonight's guest. Joining us, retired Los Angeles Police Department Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Sergeant Dorsey started with the LAPD in 1980. She worked in patrol and specialized units, including gangs, and she's the author of Black and Blue, the creation of a social advocate. Also with us, former Nashville Police Officer Vincent Hill. Vincent served in the U.S. Army. He worked five and a half years with the Nashville Police Department. He's a licensed PI in Tennessee, and he's worked as a law enforcement analyst, and he is currently an anchor and reporter for our great affiliate KJRH uh, in Tulsa. Great to have you both uh, uh, here tonight especially. We had this big breaking news today um, from your old stomping grounds, uh, Vincent, at, at a Nashville, Tennessee, involving Andrew Delkey, an officer who ended up taking a deal today for the three years, uh, the family really upset with everything. And I just wanted to give both of you um, an opportunity just to give me give us your general reaction to what happened. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the surveillance video and get your insight into what was happening and what did happen, what should have happened, and, and, and your thoughts on that. So, Sergeant Dorsey, I, I'm, I'm really interested... Uh, in your reaction to everything that happened today inside that, that courtroom in Nashville. Well, Vinny, that was really tough to watch, and it's hard not to be moved. I'm a mother, and I'm a black woman, and I feel that mother's pain. It was very difficult to watch, and to know that this officer was given three years without the family's um, input, believing that he'll probably only serve half of that, really goes to speak to how little value um, they have in that jurisdiction for black lives. Vincent, that's your old jurisdiction. Uh, your thoughts about what happened today? Yeah, Vinny, well, I, I think, and I think we can all agree, right, that to see that mother's pain, that's something no one wants to see. Uh, and I know Glenn Funk personally, uh, I wish he would have reached out to the family if he had not reached out to the family and said, hey, this is what we're offering. This is what you can expect. I think they would have had more time to have, more time to process that, th those emotions that they saw in the courtroom. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, based on what I've seen in this case and watching the video several times, I think, and the prosecutor even said themselves, they don't think they could have a stronger case than manslaughter. So I think at the end of the day, based on the evidence of the case, Unfortunately, in the family's point of view, that was the right decision. Okay, let's, let's take a look now at that at video out of Nashville, Tennessee. It's, again, Officer Delkey, police officer, shooting the victim, Daniel Hambrick, in the back. All right, so the question tonight is, uh, what should he have done? How do you see how all of this transpired? Uh, Vincent Hill, I'll begin with you. Um, as you looked at that video and you, you saw that video, and we can run that video again, and as we're looking at it, uh, as well comment on it, but what, what are your thoughts? Well, Vinny, I think it breaks down to officer perception, right? Uh, let's take a look at what happened. It was a, a pursuit, I believe. There was a foot chase there. We believe that Hambrick was armed. On the video, you can see that Hambrick looked in the officer's direction. So I think it comes down to officer perception of a reasonable, imminent threat against his life. And again, I never want to Monday morning quarterback an officer's decision. I can't say I would have acted the same way. I can't say I would have acted differently. But it comes down to, did Delkey believe in that exact split second, and we know officers react in split second decisions most of the time when you're talking deadly force, did he believe he had to make that decision? And that's what the case came down to. Sergeant Dorsey? Yeah, listen, I mean, he believed that he needed to use deadly force because he couldn't catch him. And so officers don't get to use deadly force when you can't catch someone. This is reminiscent of the Walter Scott situation and many others where suspects flee. It's inherent. 
to police work. We know that folks run. He had other alternatives. He certainly could have set up a perimeter. He could have gotten on his radio and requested for backup. If they have access to an air unit, he could have requested an air unit to try to contain this person within the perimeter. Uh, this person could have uh, been followed up at his home at a later time if he should happen to get away and escape the perimeter. But we see officers time and time again shooting an unarmed uh, or armed. And I don't know what the case was with this um, man, but he's running away because you can't catch them. And then you minimize and mitigate, uh, excuse away that behavior by saying, well, it was my perception. But that's not the way that we're trained and taught. And I think it's offensive. And given the verdict that we now know, a, a three-year penalty, I find it offensive. Vincent Hill, does it make a big difference to you uh, if he is armed or unarmed uh, in this case? Yeah, absolutely, Vinny. And listen, I patrolled those exact streets where that took place. Delkey and I had the same call sign, 2 Frank 13. I know the area. There's women, there's children, there's grandmothers, there's a bunch of people that are walking around. So as an officer, your job, contrary to what people believe, is to protect and serve. So had he gotten away, had he gone and shot a grandmother or had he shot back towards that officer and then a kid just walking by catches a stray bullet, then the blame would still be on Delkey. So his job is to protect and serve. And again, I don't Monday morning quarterback anyone's decisions. I can't say I would have done anything different or the same, but his job at the end of the day, Vinny, is to protect and serve the citizens of Nashville. So if he go, gets away and kills five people, who's the blame? Delkey is. Sergeant Dorsey, is that a concern? If, that's, that's a big if. Listen, we're dealing in hypotheticals. Let's deal with reality because maybe he would not have killed someone. Maybe he would not have fired and a child would have been hit. And so, you know, we can come up with all kind of what ifs and, and, and hypotheticals about why this thing makes sense. Officers are trained and allowed to use deadly force in the immediate defense of life. And there was no immediate defense of life. This was something that this officer did because he didn't have the physical stamina to chase this man down and take him into custody. All right, folks, we're going to uh, continue our Crime Time segment. Vincent Hill, Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey will stay with us. More Crime Time straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. When I first saw the message, um, I don't think I really even stopped to think about what was going on. I just, um, I just felt like I needed to act. We've got an unbelievable rescue story coming up here in our Crime Time segment. Still with us, Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey and Vincent Hill. Uh, this comes to us from WFTS in Tampa, Florida. A bar manager, bar manager rescues a woman during a sexual assault. The manager here tells me the bar received an alarming message to its Facebook page Sunday afternoon, a desperate plea for help. Well, she wasted no time grabbing a trusted customer and taking action. They went into the restroom together. At that point, things changed. Police say the victim managed to use Facebook to send a message for help during that violent attack. Management at the dog bar shared it with ABC Action News. It reads in part, help me, please call the police. When I first saw the message, um, I don't think I really even stopped to think about what was going on. I just, um, I just felt like I needed to act. Stephanie Marble pounded on all four bathroom doors, soon rescuing the victim. Pretty traumatized by the event. Um, Still, uh, I think it's going to take a little while for it to leave me. St. Pete police arrested Jared Kennedy Matchett, charging him with sexual battery. According to the report, the victim said, I don't give you permission. But Matchett continued anyway. She thought quickly. She used what she had, which was her phone. She acted quickly, and then we're really glad the employees took immediate action to get her help. So I was able to follow him down the street for a bit just to keep eyes to make sure he didn't disappear anywhere. Vlad Cruz risked his own safety tracking Matchett until police arrived. I hope more people take the opportunity to take action or speak out. Both customer and manager playing a critical role in Sunday's arrest. Un unbelievable and, and a rescue sending a message out through Facebook and then the way they acted and they tracked the guy afterwards. Uh, but should they have done anything differently here? Uh, Sergeant Dorsey, uh, you got a bar manager and a customer jumping in. 
Yeah, I mean, they certainly took a chance. You don't know if the perpetrator is armed. Thankfully, everything worked out the way it's supposed to. The stars aligned just right. What if she had sent that message on Facebook, of all places, and they weren't paying attention at the particular moment that they needed to, to even see the message and be able to respond in a timely manner? So good for everyone involved. And what a way um, to pay attention for that young woman to have the presence of mind to stay cool and calm and get help uh, in such a desperate time. Yeah, this is an unbelievable story, Vincent. Yeah, absolutely, Vinny. I mean, this is one of those examples when social media actually is beneficial. A lot of times we see on social media just negativity and just videos of all kinds of stuff. But like Sergeant Dorsey said, the fact that the owner or the manager of the bar was there, the guy was there, and they saw it at the exact right time, man, this is a, a huge shout-out to them, especially being able to see that message when they did. Social media worked perfectly here. Yeah, that, I, I guess I buried the lead. Facebook does good. <laughs> All right, <laughs> final story tonight comes to us from uh, Metro Police. Police searching for a vehicle of interest. All right, how difficult will it be for police to, to find these suspects? And um, the other question I have is, is, should I be as shocked as I am seeing what I'm seeing uh, just happening in the middle of the street? Vincent Hill. No, Vinny, I don't think you should be shocked. I mean, that is the world we live in today, right? People have guns. People go around shooting people all the time. Uh, but I think, you know, just looking at what I see in that video, to me it appears to be a Lexus IS silver in color. Some eyewitness may say it's a silver Toyota Camry. But the thing about that surveillance video, Vinny, is there's probably surveillance video around the surrounding areas that may have caught a license plate, may have seen where these guys parked, where they came from. So I think police will be able to track this car down rather quickly. Sergeant Dorsey? Yeah, I agree. I think that given, um, you know, the, the cameras that we have all over town now, um, someone will see this video and recognize that vehicle, know those three men, and that they were so brazen. Even the driver, he gets out of the car and opens up the driver's door and leaves it without any regard to uh, oncoming traffic. I think these are the kinds of people that will probably brag about the boldness of their action. Absolutely. And, and my hope is that they find them and find them soon. Yeah, Vincent Hill, you know, we're seeing more and more of these surveillance videos coming to us uh, from uh, police departments uh, around the country. And I am I'm shocked. You know, I, I guess I've been sort of shielded in my life. I've never witnessed anything quite like that. Now, night in and night out, I'm seeing what's happening out there, and, and it's scary. Yeah, Vinny, unfortunately, it is 2021, and, you know, people have no regard for human life. Obviously, you see four people jump out of a car and start shooting at someone. Uh, unfortunately, those are the times we live in, Vinny. All right. Vincent Hill uh, and our great affiliate, KRJH in Tulsa, thank you so much. Sergeant Dorsey, great to see oh, you. A pleasure. Both of you have a great uh, Fourth of July, and we'll, we'll have you back on real soon. Thanks so much. You too, Vinny. Thank you. Too, you too, Vinny. All right, folks. Uh,